All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our, our focus lesson here for lesson 3-1. And our I can't statement has to do with representing decimals in expanded form and, and looking at all kinds of different ways uh, that we can write these decimals and represent them, not just in the expanded form. But we're going to look actually more than that and just try to understand decimals a little bit better here. So I'm just going to kind of walk through three examples uh, here of how decimals can be written in different ways. So on the first one, a, uh, decimals can be written as equivalent fractions. And I always like to say, write it like you say it. So if you say the decimal, it can tell you what it's going to change to in a fraction. So for example, when I say this, call, this decimal here, it's 6 tenths, because I know I'm in the tenths column. And we always say what column we're in to end. So there's 6 in that tenths column. So how do I write 6 tenths as a... Um, as a fraction, it's just 6 over 10, so 6 tenths. Now, we can keep doing equivalent fractions from there. Here, it looks like they took it times 10 tenths to get it to this. Then they divided by 20 twentieths to get it to that. And maybe took that times 5 fifths to get to that. Again, anytime you take it times 1, uh, you can change it to anything you want. Call it 5 fifths and take it times 1. It gets you 15 20 fifths here if we're looking at this example. So, again, there's unlimited answers, just an equivalent uh, fractions alone. Every one of these is six tenths. All of these are the same thing and represent the same amount. Uh, if it's an improper uh, fraction here, or actually just a, a decimal that's greater than one, uh, again, write it like you say it. Four and, now there's a decimal, you say and, four and 72 hundredths, because I end in the hundredths column, so I'd write four and 72 hundredths is my mixed number. Uh, if I want to make it improper, remember the cheat step, we could take four times 100, uh, when I take 4 times 100, that cheat step, that actually gives me 400 one-hundredths. Just trying to get this thing all in hundredths, because I know that's 4. And then I have to add on the 72 more hundredths, so I get 472 hundredths. And then it looks like here they divided both sides by 4 and get it down to 118 25ths. Again, they would have to probably do the grid method to find some common factors to do that. But again, this, 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 and this, they're all the same as 4 and 72 hundredths, just in different forms. So we definitely want to be able to convert it to a fraction by write it like you say it, and then you can make an equivalent just by multiplying or dividing by 1 um, with different um, terms in there for doing that. Okay. Uh, one of the big things this unit is also to be doing decimals in expanded form. Uh, there's actually three different ways to expand. All right, so the first one here, they call it the sum of decimals in standard notation. Okay, so again, we're just trying to find the sum of all these things combined. So if I can just look at every column, I know this is 32 hundredths, but separated, expanded form means do every column by itself. This 3 is worth 3 tenths, so let's just say 3 tenths plus, and this 2 right here is worth 2 hundredths, so we call it 2 hundredths. Okay, so again, if I combine that, 3 tenths plus 2 hundredths is 32 hundredths, because I know 3 tenths is, if I wrote it in hundredths, that's 30 hundredths. I know I can add a zero on there, 30 hundredths plus 2 hundredths, 32 hundredths. So just a different way to, to break it down by every single place value column uh, to write it. This second one, sum of multiplication expressions in decimals, yet we're just going to put this and say the name of the column and how many I have. Like, for example, here, I know this is the tenth column, so I'm going to say I have one-tenth. I want to do it as a decimal here. So I've got the one-tenth column times three gives me three-tenths. Plus, I've got two of those hundredths columns, so let's take two times the one-hundredth column. And again, you just name the column, but write it as a decimal. This is the hundredths column, one one-hundredth, two times is worth two-hundredths. If I add that together, guys, it just ends up to three-tenths plus two-hundredths, thirty-two-hundredths. You get the same thing. And the last one, the sum of multiplication expressions as fractions, instead of saying one-tenth is a decimal, just do it as a uh, fraction. This is the one-tenth column. I've got three of them. Three times one-tenth is three-tenths. And I've got two times the hundredth column. Again, that's just two one-hundredths. Again, we're just converting it into a fraction there. So really, these are really, really similar, all three of them. Just expanded, really working on understanding how it works after the decimal and what these columns represent. We want to get really familiar with the tenths and the hundredths and those different columns and how we make those numbers. Okay, one that you don't see as often uh, is decimals can be written as the product of a whole number and a decimal. Product, remember, means multiply. A whole number 
and a decimal. So there's some different ways to look at this to try to understand it. We know this number together is 674 thousandths. So one thing that I do, I just know that if it's ending in thousandths, I'm going to say it's the thousandth column times 674. 674 times of those little thousandths is 674 thousandths. Okay, we're not even to one yet, even though I'm taking it times 674, because a one one thousandth is very small. What some people kind of think about too, another way to think about this, we know if I move my decimal once, twice, and three times, I took it times a thousand, because we know every time we bump it over to the left one time, boom, we made it 10 times bigger, because every column is 10 times bigger than the next. So if I move it one, two, three, to make it 674, I made it a thousand times bigger. So in order to get it back to its value, I need to make it a thousand times smaller. And I know by a, multiplying by one one thousandth, that's the same as dividing by a thousand. So that's 674 of those thousandths. All right. I also could think 674, if I multiplied it times a thousand to get it there, I can divide by a thousand. Okay. Dividing by a thousand is the same thing as multiplying time one one thousandth. Because remember, that's one one thousandth of 674. That's the same thing as dividing by a thousand. So both of those are, again, examples of how I could show uh, what 0.674 looks like in a different way. Not a big deal if it's a whole number here, too. Okay, it's 3.042 or 3 and 42 thousandths. Again, if I'm just pretending to move the decimal and get it to 3,042, I made it a thousand times bigger to get it to 3,042, so I need to get it a thousand times smaller. So again, I can multiply by one one thousandth to do that. Or could I divide it by a thousand? Again, same thing. Multiplying by one one thousandth is the same as dividing by a thousandth. In this case, I'm not out to the thousandths, I'm out to the hundredths. So again, I could do one one hundredth 32 times is 32 hundredths. Think about that cheat step. Just making it, taking it, making it 100 times bigger to make it 32. So I got to make it 100 times smaller to get it the same value. So I multiply times 1 one hundredth, or I could take 32 divided by 100. Again, that's 32 hundredths, and that's how I say it, so that makes sense. So guys, there's so many ways to look at numbers, whether it's equivalent fractions uh, with these decimals and change them to those fractions, all these different ways of expanded forms and showing one column at a time, or just writing it as a whole number uh, times a decimal, or maybe divided by a thousand or a, a hundred, depending on the situation. Could be divided by ten if you're only to tenths. So again, just want you to think about decimals in a lot of different uh, ways here to understand numbers and the relationships between fractions and decimals and how our number system works. We will now be doing a second video here shortly talking about name collection boxes where we'll use a lot of this stuff.